Yeah, I'm going to talk to you uh, just briefly about a uh, related topic to what uh, Jeremy and Jim talked about. Uh, it's the contrast, though, between uh, determinism uh, and predictability in uh, relativistic theories. I'm not going to use general relativity. I just want to use traditional Maxwell theory. And what I want to argue is that uh, Maxwell theory is, uh, for different reasons, is uh, uh, purely deterministic. But uh, without augmentation, we can't make predictions. So, uh, so what I've drawn here is a, a horizontal line, at, uh, which is, I hope, extremely informative. Anyway, this is supposed to uh, <laughs> represent a space-like hypersurface or an achronal hypersurface, as uh, Jim was discussing. And we want to evolve uh, initial data for the electromagnetic field and any charges that are interacting with the f field. So um, modulo a few uh, technical caveats. We know that we can do that. We can specify data that satisfies the Gauss law constraints and uh, evolve it forward um, or backward deterministically. So the theory, Maxwell theory, is deterministic in that sense. But uh, I claim, uh, and I don't think it's really that controversial, but that uh, we can't make predictions with uh, Maxwell theory uh, uh, simpliciter. So why not? It, it has to do with the fact that we're located at a particular point. It's related to Jim's um, point. We're located at a particular point on the hypersurface. OK, so we're located. Uh, here at the uh, apex of that uh, past light cone. And uh, the picture here is one of, um, in which we have charged sources, which may or may not be the source of uh, radiation. If they're not the source of radiation, then we can't see them. And we can make some predictions about what radiation we'll see in the future on the basis of the behavior of the charged sources in the past. This, this is as simple as predicting that the sun is going to rise tomorrow. We're going to see the sun rise tomorrow. Why? Because we have the sun is an emitter of radiation. We have a model of how it behaves. And we have reason to think that it will continue behaving as such. So we do make predictions. So what's the problem? The problem, uh, potentially, is that we can have radiation coming in from past null infinity. We can have radiation uh, that doesn't have any sources. And when we make predictions, we usually assume, we always assume, that uh, there is no such radiation. So my, uh, what I wanted to just point out here is that we're assuming a time asymmetric um, kind of uh, constraint or boundary condition on the theory, no free incoming radiation. Uh, and given that, so Maxwell theory plus that condition allows us to make and confirm, uh, make predictions and confirm the theory. That's why we believe the theory, because we can make predictions and then, and then see that they're, that they're the case. Um, so uh, that's uh, arguably, it's, this is a time asymmetry. The, the, one of the interesting aspects of this is that the time asymmetry is partly coming from the fact that we've already imposed a kind of time asymmetry on the situation in insisting that the observer can only observe the past light cone. Okay, if the observer had access to the future and the past light cone, this would be a different uh, story because the, the radiation coming from past null infinity is going to intersect the future light cone. But then again, if you do that, it's not clear what uh, you mean by prediction since you already know as uh, a priori your future, your future observations. All right, so determinism and predictability are distinct here. And um, I think the, I want to make one point that this is, it's not, it's related to the Wheeler-Feynman absorber theory. Uh, in the Wheeler-Feynman absorber theory, there's all, all radiation has sources, and all radiation is ultimately absorbed, hence the name. So this is, uh, has the first condition satisfied, not the second. I believe uh, that it's certainly the case that the phase space of the theory 
a theory augmented with this kind of boundary condition is smaller than the phase space of the full theory. Whether you uh, want to say that the number of degrees of freedom is reduced depends in, in part on how you're going to count the degrees of freedom. It's a little bit tricky because there's no obvious closed form constraint that tells you what the allowable initial data are on the theory. What is the case, though, is if you know the charges uh, for all time, all the, the potential sources of electromagnetic radiation, uh, you've dictated the field. Okay, that's uh, all I have to say. Thanks very much, Steve.